Hey guys, Brando New Productions here, and welcome to part 4 of how to create a snake game within Java. Now, if you noticed, this tutorial series is actually moving really fast. Well, that's because um, all of these methods and all of these um, things I'm using to actually create the snake game, I have actually covered in previous tutorials. The only things that I have not covered, really, are the linked list and the threads. Um, so I'm going to have to cover those in future tutorials so you can get more detailed explanations of those. But all of this other material was covered in other tutorials. However, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I, along with other users, are, will be very glad to um, help out. I've been actually very happy with the amount of other users that have been willing to help out each other because I don't have time to answer everybody's uh, questions. So, in our last tutorials, we actually created a working snake canvas that's actually going to pop in a loop and get started right away. The only problem with this? Well, we can't see it, because what we created was actually a canvas, and we need to create an applet that actually pops our canvas into the applet in order to actually see what's going on. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and create a new class that's actually going to be an applet. So we're going to call this snake applet. And this snake applet class is actually going to extend an applet. Now in order to do that, we're just going to have to import Java or import java.applet. Applet. So once that's done, we can go ahead and actually uh, implement our canvas. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new canvas. So we're going to say private um, snake canvas, and there's going to be a private instance variable, and we're going to call it C. Now when this applet is actually initiated, we need to set up a couple of things. So we're going to use the init method of the applet, which is called the before the paint method. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that C equals a new snake canvas. Uh, because we don't want it to be a um, not a new version. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a few things. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that it's visible. So we're going to say set visible to true. Whoa. To true. On top of that, we're going to make sure that it's uh, focusable. Because if, we, um, if it's not focusable, then we won't be able to actually hit it with our keystrokes. The next thing we need to do is actually add it into our program. So we're going to say this.addc. And we're also going to say this dot set visible because we need to make sure that our um, applet is actually showing up on the screen. And finally, we want to actually set up the size. So we're going to say this dot set size, and we're going to make this whole thing, um, let's just say, a new dimension of 640 by 480. That's definitely not a new dimension, but that'll work. So we can do that. And now, if we actually say public void paint, so this is the paint method of the applet. What we want to do is we just want to make sure that our size is actually properly set up. Because for whatever reason, sometimes the size just doesn't want to cooperate uh, when we're in the init method. So in our paint method, we're going to say this.setSize and say new dimension 640 by 480. So now that we've actually set up an applet, if we actually go ahead and run the applet, we can see that, um, there it is, we do have an applet. Good on us. So now if we jump back to our canvas, we can actually make the applet start working. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that everything is in working order to actually paint on the screen. So when the canvas is actually put onto the applet, um, what we're doing is first we're creating a, so the paint method of the applet is actually, or the, of the canvas is actually called. So we're setting a new snake, setting a new fruit, we're setting global graphics, and then we're going to, we're actually starting the run thread. And since the run thread is started, we move, and then we draw our global graphics, or we draw using the global graphics, which then in turn draws the grid, draws the snake, and draws the fruit. So at the very least, we should have a grid that's popping up on the screen. But it's obviously not. Well, this could be that our... Um, because our canvas is such a small size. So what we want to do is we're going to set um, the preferred size of our canvas to be um, a new dimension, once again, of 640 by 480. And then once we do that, we can switch back over to our applet. And I think I spelled dimension wrong. No, we did not import dimension. My bad. And um, so we can save that, switch back over to our applet, run this. And as you can see, we still don't get any grids. Well, everything seems to be in working order, so we can go ahead and check out why this isn't working. So with the paint method, we're just going to say g.fillRect, and we're actually going to fill one at 0, 0 with a width and height of 10. Now, if this fills properly, then there's something with our global graphics that's wrong. 
So we can actually go ahead and press Run Snake Applet right from here. And as you can see, well, it doesn't paint a rectangle at all, which is good because that means our global graphics is not messed up. So the paint method of the canvas is not actually being called, apparently. But why is that? Well, we can go ahead and see system.out.println um, and just to confirm that the paint method is not being called. So the paint method is definitely not being called. But why is that? Well, um, I don't really know. Why is that occurring? Why isn't the paint method being called? Um, well, let me just let me pause the video and take a look into this. So I figured out that the problem actually lied within when we're setting the size. So as you can see in the snake canvas method, we were setting the this dot preferred size uh, in the actual paint method. However, the paint method would not be called unless we actually um, set the preferred size of the um, canvas in the init method of the applet. Therefore, the canvas is not just zero by zero, and it's actually going to paint something when the paint method is called. So by adding this line here in the applet, c dot set preferred size of a new dimension by 640 by 480, we can actually activate the uh, canvas. So now if we go ahead and run this, uh, you can see that we immediately get an error in thread 3 uh, because of a null pointer exception at move on line 69. And that's simply because uh, our fruit does not actually have a point. So let's go ahead and make our fruit a point. So our fruit is going to go ahead and be... Um, oh wait, our fruit is a point. Our fruit is going to be a point zero zero and um, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to add some points to our snake so our snake is going to add um, we're just going to make that uh, let's add three one snake dot add a uh, new point three two snake dot add new point three three and I need to make sure that this is a new point and not just numbers um, okay so in our paint method, we now have a fruit at point zero zero, and then a snake at points three one, three two, and three three. So now, if we go ahead and run the method, so you can see that we've got a very, very, very tiny grid here, and we've actually got a fruit at um, the zero zero, and then some green objects at um, green. Now, as you can see, our grid is actually uh, red, and that is because when we actually drew our fruit, we did not set the color back to black after we're done. So we're just going to do that by, when we draw the fruit, we're going to say g.setColor, color.black. And we're actually going to make our grid a little bigger by setting the grid width, or the box height to be 10, box width to be 10, and we're going to set the grid width to be 50, and the grid height to be 50. So now if we go ahead and run this application, you can see that things are just a tad more visible. So we've got our fruit in the top left, and our snake at 3.1. 3, 2, and 3, 3. Now if you notice, it's actually four spots over, and that's because since we're dealing with um, programming still, um, the zero actually counts as a spot. You'll also notice that we have some flashing going on, and that is because we have not yet implemented double buffering. We'll get to that, but right now let's adjust for user input. So what we want to do is we actually want to get the user's keystrokes when they press them on the keyboard. Now in order to do that, we actually need to make this program implement a key listener. So we can just add a comment onto our implement statement, and we're going to say this implements a key listener. And then we're going to go ahead and get an error, and we're going to want to uh, import key listener and then add the unimplemented methods. So the first thing we want to do is when the key is pressed, when a key is pressed, we want to see if it's the up arrow, or the down arrow, the right arrow or the left arrow. And if it is any of these, we can actually go ahead and change the direction of the snake. So we're just going to say if e.get get key code equals key event dot vk up. Actually, you know what? We're going to use a switch statement because I'm feeling um, semi risky. So we're going to say switch of e.get key code. And we're just going to open up a new case or a new switch block. So we're going to say case um, key event dot vk, which stands for virtual key up. 
So in this case, what we want to do is we actually just want to say that our direction is currently direction dot north. And then we're going to break out of that. However, if the case is key event dot vk down, then we want to say direction equals direction dot south. That should be in all capital letters. And then we're going to want to break out of that. If that's not the case, then we're going to say case of key event uh, virtual key right, which is again the right arrow key. Then we're going to say the direction equals direction dot east. And then we're going to break out of that once we're done with that. And then if that's not the case, once again, we're going to say key event dot vk left is the final thing we want to do. And the direction is going to be direction dot west. And then we're going to break out of that. So once we press the arrow keys, um, it's just simply going to change the direction. And that's actually going to make our move, move method do something. So before we actually do that, we need to make sure that our canvas here knows that it's its own key listener. So when we actually are creating everything within the paint method, which mind you is very bad habit, we're actually going to want to say that this dot add key listener, and then we're going to tell it that it's its own key listener by saying this dot add key listener this. So now if we actually run our applet, we should be able to start the snake off moving by pressing the down arrow key. And as you can see, it is definitely working. Um, we can move the snake around pretty well too. Um, the so what we're doing is every time we press this, it's simply, or every time it moves, it's simply um, creating a trail and um, deleting the old one and popping a new one in the right direction. Now, the only problem with this, as you can see, is it creates an everlasting trail. And this would be totally fine if we were playing Tron, but we're not. And the reason for this is because every time we move, what we, or every time we draw, what we need to do is we actually need to clear the screen. So before we draw, we want to say g.clearRect. And we want to clear it from 0, 0, all the way from box width, or all the way to box width times um, grid width to box height times grid height. So every time we draw, first we're going to clear the screen. And then on top of our new blank canvas, we're going to draw the grid, the snake, and the fruit. So what we're doing so simply is we're drawing everything on top of each other. So now you can see that we've got a basic system going. We've got a snake applet currently working where we've got the correct behavior of the snake. Now currently it's not really possible to run into yourself because you're so small, but that's okay because we haven't actually added a case for that. It's just kind of fun to play around with this. OK, apparently we have, we're having a small freak out. All right, so what we want to do now is we're actually going to minimize this and check out where our timing is and then pop back in. So currently, I'm at thrift 13 minutes long for this video. So I think that this is long enough for part four, um, which was setting up user input in our snake application and getting the visuals actually working through an applet. Now we've got a cool little actual snake going along. And in the next part of the tutorial, we actually need to make sure that the snake grows when we grab the fruit, and then the fruit is actually put at a random location. So thanks for watching part four of how to make snake in Java. Um, stay tuned for the next part, and until then, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.